For me, I thought that I could start by doing autobiographical comics. Serious literary pieces in which every single sentence and every single line is um, considered. With comics, it's very hard to break away from that. This is a comic, you know, like even the word is comic, like it should be funny or even goofy or silly or self-referential or ironic. There has to be something special about it for it to exist because otherwise it just just another stupid story there's plenty of stories I was always just such a bad student like my mind would just immediately go away and I would just always draw like I just could not I could not learn, even in an art class, I couldn't pay attention. But I remember I read this book, uh, Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain, Betty Edwards, and it's just simply about seeing things as a flat space, which was a huge revelation for me. I would do this in class, and then I would just like draw the whole classroom. I was like, wow, I can draw. I mean, I can really draw, not just like teenage style drawing. <laughs> I did have a sense that, that it was something that I could do professionally and even though I didn't know anything about it or how to do it, I found that if I kept, like, each comic I did would improve on the, the one before. So I sort of had this equation in my mind that if I keep doing it, I will eventually become good enough. Whereas with everything else I did, I didn't have, I didn't see the improvement. I do remember wanting to have some kind of guidance, but not really knowing where to get it. I remember having like fantasies of some great cartoonist <laughs> just taking me under their wing and teaching me everything they knew. And uh, I sort of recruited this girl in my art class, and I was like, I'm drawing comics, you want to draw comics with me? <laughs> so we were drawing comics together, and I think our f we first did a comic book together. It was just a very short little comic, and we just took it to this convention and passed it around to people. And we met people there. I think that was the first time I met cartoonists. It was really a nice community. There was something very warm about it, it seemed to me, and very friendly. People were very understanding. And people who are cartoonists, they tend to have this sort of certain kind of personality. I mean, it's just like a lot of work and a lot of solitary work. I mean, you really have to have some kind of like inner intensity or something to stick with it. I started giving myself deadlines of the conventions because usually people would show up at the convention and have a new mini comic and I was starting to sell them. I was selling them about $3 each, which was about how much it cost to, to print. We would uh, squat tables in which like we would find a table that was all, all rent, already rented to somebody but they hadn't gotten there yet or they just weren't, they didn't show up for whatever reason. And we would just sell comics from there until somebody told us to leave. But I think I sort of had like a fan base of like, people were starting to buy it and people were sort of, even if they didn't like everything I did, they were sort of seeing that, that I was a, doing something interesting. Like I, I didn't want to be seen as somebody who was just doing something interesting. I wanted everything I did to be great, you know, like, and so if they didn't see it, everything is great, then I was like a failure. <laughs> I was really struggling with depression a lot, I think. But I was also able to put the depression into the comics. Like I was almost able to sometimes directly translate it into the comics. I remember I would get like flashes of inspiration and then I would just take it from there, like I would have this idea. It usually had to be a story about a girl. <laughs> and then I would just sit there and pencil and erase and pencil and erase and pencil and erase. And then I'd be like, there it is, I got it. I just 
just wanted to be as good as Robert Crumb or Jaime Hernandez. I remember when I lived in San Francisco, I had a neighbor who would just come and give me all kinds of feedback. He would say, you'll probably end up being a children's book artist. I mean, I think now, looking at it, I think it had to do with being a girl, too. I think girls are not very encouraged to be autobiographical. Like, that girls are sort of taught to be sort of ashamed to be doing diary-like stuff. For me, it was like everything was riding on this, you know? I failed at everything else. There was like a sort of desperation. And I think in, my, in a way, like, just my wanting it sort of got in a way. If I didn't care so much, or if I was a little bit more uh, cavalier about it, and less jealous, less competitive, and less intense, probably would have come to me a bit easier. I guess I have more pressure now to produce. <laughs> Nobody was expecting any anything of me then. But now it's like, I, you gotta draw comics or else die. <laughs> I mean, that's how I pay my rent, and it's hard. Every comic I did, I was like, this is my education, so this is not gonna be my great comic. And now when I go, <laughs> when I work, I'm like, this has gotta be my great comic. This is not my education, I'm now, this is what I'm doing, you know? I mean, I'd like to think that every artist goes through that at some point.